guys you are most welcome again on my youtube channel and today we are going to talk about this question and this is very important question in order to understand the age and uh, the importance of chaucer in english language and sometimes we don't know how chaucer helped english in development so let's start this question and um, we will go through all the important topics all right so keep watching let's go through chalo iske bare mein baat karte hain Chaucer's realism or Chaucer as representative poet of the 14th century or you can uh, say that why we call him father of English literature so here is the first remark by Ricketts and uh, as he says Chaucer symbolizes as no other writer does and we can say like Tennyson was in Victorian era or in 18th century Pope does so they, what they all did they did one thing they just helped english language to get developed all right and his place in english literature is even more important than uh those writers for he is the first great writer the first man to use naked words in english uh language the first to make our composite language a thing compact and vital indeed chaucer is the pure or uh, true representative of his age because we don't find any other writer जैसा कि आप देख सकते हैं कि चौसा एक तरह से ओवर शेडो कर देता है हर किसी को उसमें एंड यू कैन फाइंड दैट हिज इम्पोर्टेंस कम्प्लीटली देयर सो चौसर इज द ट्रू रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ हिज एज ही पोर्ट्रेट एंड कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव पिक्चर ऑफ द कंटेम्प्रेरी लाइफ नेक्स्ट थिंग वी कैन टॉक अबाउट अबाउट चौसर्स रियलिज्म वी कैन टॉक इन डिटेल्स अंडर दीज हैडिंग्स एज यू कैन से द ओल्ड एंड द न्यू next uh, next we can talk about social conditions as i tell you in every video that if we don't know the social conditions of the particular age we cannot analyze the things written in that particular age next is the church and the religious life and realistic representation and the cross section of society as we all know chaucer was traveling a lot he was man of affairs so he knew the condition of people and uh, the society very well so let's talk about this topic the old and the new chaucer's age was transitional as i told you what is transition period there is one period and then another period starts and the in between period that is called a transitional period usse hum transitional period bolte hain so this age was transitional period and uh, two ages were the old uh, old age and the new age and english language was getting uh, you know developed and this was the period of uh, between medievalism as i just told you in another videos previous videos if uh, probably you have watched that um, what was medieval all about it was about wars it was about sea and uh, the storytelling and there was you know less written work and less uh, written composed and uh, uh, we can say anonymity okay anonymous writers you will find so whenever we talk about medievalism what medievalism is it is uh, you know about if we are talking about literature agar hum literature ke bare mein baat karte hain to ye wars ke bare mein seas ke bare mein okay storytelling ke bare mein using of alliteration so whenever there is a word medievalism there are these things they are this word representing the desire for change was already at work he saw the early rise of renaissance okay so what is renaissance renaissance is you know revival or birth of new learning so everything was going through as we can see some examples from uh, canterbury tales the squire the knight sun represents the new conception of chivalry he has more luxurious and less idealistic temper of the age of the french wars like his father he does not dream of chivalry and war he takes delights in pleasures of life well could he sit a horse and ride make songs just and dance draw and ride so these are the lines which representing and uh, giving a clear picture of the is ye line hai jahan se hame ek is ki clear picture wahan par milti hai other we can say the clerk of oxford represent the interest that people had started showing in classical learning okay so here that time at the age of uh, chaucer as we know that he was you know taking inspiration from boccaccio petrarch so these all our classical uh, writings they were writing and uh, everybody including chaucer was uh, getting fascinated towards these learnings classical learning 
Chaucer was influenced by Boccaccio, as I just told you, and uh, Dante. They were pioneers of, uh, you know, Renaissance in Italy. So you can see the impact in on England. Okay, so hopefully you are getting my points clear. He imbibed from them humanism, and which is clearly reflected in uh, the Canterbury Tales. Chaucer was pioneer of Renaissance humanism in English literature. So you can uh, note down this line. Okay, and they. Uh, this writer was pioneer of Renaissance humanism in English literature. Commenting on Chaucer on traditional figure, uh, here is the good comment. You can go through this one. Let's talk about the social condition. If you are going through the Chaucer's uh, Canter Canterbury Tales, definitely you are going through the you know picture which is drawn by, or we can say uh, the picture drawn by his words. Uh, which is showing social conditions. Chaucer was the first time made poetry a powerful medium for the expression of contemporary social conditions and life. In this respect, it strikes a truly modern note. He is the truly the social chronicle of the late, uh, late 14th century as Froissart is the political and military chronicle in this same period. So let's talk about a uh, little bit more characters and uh, so that we can relate things. The Reeve in the prologue took advantage of his all, all opportunities for squeezing the villains at the same time as cheating the Lord of Manor. The Reeve's tale exposes the dishonesty of Miller. So um, every story is representing a quality of social, uh, social we can say these are uh, you know presenting that time there. Miller on pilgrimage is not an honest man as he can uh, might be. So dishonesty was uh, you know prevailing that time. Okay, some were looking for luxurious life. The Franklin who is quite well off represent the new class. The last thing is the church and religious life. Uh, about this topic we have already talked about uh, talked a lot in previous video. If you didn't watch that. You can go through and you can pause video and you can read this one. This is important topic. What uh, what was church, its importance and the importance of religious life and religious, uh, you know, connections with people. Uh, that brought lots of events in that period. So it is uh, very important to understand the church and the religious life. Hopefully you like the video. If you like, please do comment and uh, share. And if you are uh, visiting my channel first time, you can subscribe the video and uh, subscribe the channel and you can watch other videos. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Take care. See you in next video.